here. Um, I don't know if I told you or not, but the, this property um, that was purchased uh, many, many years ago by my husband uh, is really, at that time, was a cow pasture. And it was probably close to 40 years ago. And uh, it was left un untended. And in 40 years, uh, all of this land became a jungle, and I mean a jungle. Uh, but anyway, uh, throughout the woods, we have been finding all sorts of farm equipment, uh, uprooting it, and um, and we're, we're featuring it all over my yard. And this, of course, is my pride and joy. Uh, I think they call this a harvester or something. But at any rate, behind me, I'm hoping that you can get a good shot of the uh, Abravite over here. Uh, you can see how tall they are. They're very, very tall. And um, my son, when he was becoming an Eagle Scout, um, was uh, using uh, this land for one of his badges to um, reforest the land. He placed many, 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 many seedlings of hemlock, old scotch pine, and abravite. And um, they, were, they were only about six inches high, but he placed them all over the place. And over the years, the deer have uh, nibbled on them and ate just about all of them. The only ones that survived are the abravite behind me. And you can see how tall they, they've grown. I would say they're almost uh, 50 feet high. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm just so thrilled with, with that. Can you imagine having that in your landscape? But at any rate, the trunks of the trees, I don't know if you can get down to the trunks of the trees. They're, um, the deer have eaten all the way up to the trunk, uh, to where it starts. But I have, they can't reach any further. So these will be fine. Wrapped around each trunk is a uh, wire, or like chicken wire, and that's because the, um, the deer like to rub their antlers on the uh, tree trunks in, uh, when, during rutting season. So we had to protect the tree trunks because if you don't, they will eventually peel all the, the bark off of the tree trunks and of course the trees will die. My favorite tree is the weeping willow tree. And I bought this uh, last year, and you can see how tall it is. Let's see, I'm gonna get in here and show you how tall this tree is. Now, I bought this last year, and the reason I, it's so tall is at my age, I'm no longer buying small trees. I am now buying the biggest trees I can find, if all the biggest plants I can find. And it, it survived the, the horrible winter we had, and um, all I have to do is keep it watered. Uh, weeping willow trees love wet feet. And of course, you never grow this near your house because the root system will uh, grow so far that eventually will find your septic system. And you don't want to lose your septic system. So this is quite far from my house. And I just love my weeping willow tree. OK, well, I think. I think that's it for this side, unless you want to go over there and capture that birdhouse over there. Uh, I have had two um, bluebird nestings in this particular birdhouse. And by the way, I have several others in, uh, around. And when you put up a birdhouse in your, more than one birdhouse on your property, always face uh, away from the other front door of the other birdhouse. In other words, there's a birdhouse way over there, and that is not facing that is not facing uh, north. That will be facing west. They don't like to have their um, front doors facing each other. And it's probably, let's see, how far away is that one? I would say it's probably 10, 20, 40, 50. It's about 50 feet away. And so that's a good distance for the birdhouses to be. Um, the other birdhouse has uh, tree swallows in it. And um, this is quite, quite a place for birds. I just love it. All right, let's see. I think that's it for this side. Let's go over on the other side. I'm standing on a ladder looking up at my, my wonderful, wonderful chimes. Uh, I was on a, a garden tour with my husband uh, one day, and they had the most beautiful uh, brass uh, chimes in their garden. 
And my husband looked at it and said, I think I can make that. And sure enough, he did. And the sound is just wonderful. Now, it's made up of copper tubing. You can buy that in Home Depot or, or whatever the big box stores. And at different sizes, he had them cut. And then, of course, you need that middle piece. Can you see the middle piece in there? And then you need something for the wind to blow um, and a round disc. Now, this is a very lightweight piece of plywood. And um, when the breeze, and it's just as pretty as the one that we saw. And I am sure they, they probably cost a lot more than what this cost my husband. So I'm just thrilled with that. I did want to show you that. My border garden, if you can get a nice look of this border garden. And then come back, Gail. It'll be just great. So I'm back here.
double white hibiscus blooms. Absolutely gorgeous. Now you know that Rose of Sharon doesn't usually have double blooms. This one not only has double blooms, but it's white. And because of that, they look so much like camellias. I think this is absolutely my one of my prize bushes. Here's another view. Here is another view of the Rose of Sharon, just to show you how prolific it is and how pretty it really can be. And the again, the flowers are so much like camellias that they're just beautiful. If I can get a close up of this flower here, right here. they do look so much like a camellia because I think it's because they are double flowered but they're pure white and they're just absolutely beautiful so pretty in the border garden now over here is another bush that I actually it's a tree it's a tree called Vitex V is in Victor I T is in Tom E X is in X-ray and it's new it's new to me I just bought it last year and you know you think there's nothing new under the sun and then along comes this tree that's been around for quite a while I guess picture of it. Isn't that beautiful? That beautiful blue. To get a, a lovely shade of blue, it's sort of bluish purple actually. But to get that in your garden is um, really something. It's going to grow about um, oh, anywhere from 6 to 25 feet so be prepared and I am afraid I put it in my garden so who knows how big that's going to get but I did put it towards the edge so that if it if it uh, gets any um, bigger it can just sort of go off to the edge and I'll keep it pruned but the um, flowers again are so so lovely and um, they're growing um, in the border garden and as I told you, this is my border garden, uh, one of my border gardens, and it's fairly new. I used to have it filled with perennials, and now, of course, I've taken them all out. I put, put down a black plastic sheet or the agricultural cloth on top of the soil so that the weeds will not come through. And uh, then on top of that, I have um, pine needles. And so it, it really makes a very 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 neat garden when you do something like that and I have um, boulders trimming this garden and it sort of hitches on to going past my um, vitex and there's a bed post there that we found in the woods they all rusted and coming around here is my again I'll show you my hosta. It's called the Patriot. And again as I said before, for some reason the deer do not seem to like white and green hosta. Now here is the butterfly bush. Here's a close-up of the Vitex. Again, as I told you, it's, it's spelled V as in Victor, I, T as in Tom, E, X as in X-ray. But isn't that a beautiful, beautiful
beautiful shade for the garden. This is, again, as I told you, it is a new, sh new tree. Um, I just planted it last year and it came through the winter beautifully. I think it's going to grow. Well, I know it's going to grow. I, I looked it up. Uh, anywhere from 6 feet to 25 feet. So you can see it's going to be a mighty tall tree. But I can keep it pruned down um, and hopefully we can um, keep it down to a normal height. But I'm just thrilled with this because there's so much color and apparently went right through a horrible winter with no problems at all. So I am just tickle silly with this. And uh, so it's right in front of uh, this sort of dark bush, which makes it look even nicer. Um, and um, so I do hope you'll uh, consider putting one of these in your property. Now, uh, over here, down here, I'll go back to this again and show you this all over again. This is... You get a nice close-up of this. This is called a butterfly bush or a buddlier. And I hope to keep it about this height. These can get very, very tall, uh, this type of bush. It can get very tall, but you can keep it down to des the desired height simply by pruning it uh, after blooming. And, and, and you probably should uh, prune it in the early spring, uh, before blooming, blooming and then after blooming. But you can keep it down. And it really is what the butterflies love and what the hummingbirds love. So this, like this again is called a butterfly bush. It comes in several different colors. One is a deep, deep purple. And the other one is a, um, a white, deep purple, this sort of lavender shade. And I think there's a couple of other shades that um, are really quite nice. So anyway, um, if you can just pan over there, you can see uh, how far my this border garden goes. This is on the side of my house. And eventually I will take you in the front of my house to show you my um, border garden there. Now here is a hydrangea that I bought. And when I bought it, it was all covered with gorgeous sky blue blooms. That was last year. This year, I have nothing but pink blooms, as you can see. There's a nice big one right here, but they're all pink. Now, that is because this soil is not acid enough for the, it is not acid enough for the soil, I mean, to turn it blue. So let me just put my microphone on, there we go. It's not acid enough, so I went to um, one of the big box stores and I bought a bag of soil acidifier. And you can see it is for azaleas. It is aluminum sulfate, all natural, and it's also good for blueberries. Now you can see that if I put this on this shrub, which I did last night, and I watered it thoroughly into the soil, and I'm going to come back later, maybe, oh, next spring. I would love to have it turn blue this year, but it's a little late for that, but next spring, I'm hoping that the soil around this, this bush is a little more acid, and that way, you see, I can get my hydrangeas to turn blue for me. So there's a little hint for you. If they're not turning blue, they need acid soil. You see this, how big those leaves are? This here is, <clears throat> let's see, how many years old? Well, it could very well be a hundred years old. Uh, my father 
when I was very, very young and uh, just started gardening, uh, a young bride, and uh, my father brought over a piece of his rhubarb plant. And it is now 60, 60 years later, I think. And he had it in his yard for many, many, many years. I have since then given my, um, my daughter Rosemary a piece of it, and, and she lives in Maryland, and she just informed me that she has a huge plant also. So that's one way of getting your plants um, in, um, put them in your will or something. But anyway, my daughter Gail, um, if, she, if she finds a little plot of um, land where she doesn't have lawns and her three border collie dogs, um, I will give her a piece of this too and she can make rhubarb pie like I do.